Well, good morning to what is a surprisingly warm morning considering it is January. We have this uh, amazing combination right now where it's both uh, surprisingly warm, but we also have a beautiful mountain view full of snow. I spent the last couple of days sanding down the beams, hand hewing them, staining them. There's only one room left to go, and today, once Heather drops off the kids at school, we're going to carry on with finishing up this flooring once and for all. So while we are away, I turned off our battery system, unplugged everything, and um, just left it here. Um, I sh probably should have moved it to someplace warmer, but now the batteries aren't working very well. I don't know if um, maybe they froze too deeply or what happened while we were away, but now every morning um, they are dead, even if they're full the night before. I'll turn it off, unplug everything so there's nothing draining it, and then the following morning it is 0% battery. Um, thankfully, because of how much sun we get here, I just need an hour or two of solar to um, charge them up, but it's been meaning the first uh, couple hours of the day of working are without electricity. So I am aware that most people would say not to brush on the stain. You should wipe it on with a cotton rag and then wipe it off. But because of all of the hand hewing that we've done, um, beating it up, adding all of those ax marks and distress marks, I'm just finding it to be a lot easier to apply the stain with a brush to get in there into all of the cracks and make sure everything is uh, nice and coated. And then to take a rag and uh, wipe it off. I am honestly quite pleased with the way that this room in particular is turning out. Uh, doing a, a little bit of a different technique than I did in the kitchen. It honestly is, is just, I mean, it looks rather authentic if you were to look at the beams that I've actually authentically taken through the hand hewing process with a broad axe versus these. They look pretty pretty close, pretty identical. The only difference with these beams and those is the species of wood. Um, that is a, a chestnut grown on property that I've been hand hewing um, up from the mountain. Um, whereas this is, actually I don't know, I think it's pine. I'm not the best at, at identifying species. But so it's, it's definitely not near, it's a much more affordable wood, not nearly as nice. Um, so the, the grain texture and patterns and all of that doesn't quite match, but that's why we wanted to go through this process is I just wasn't really happy with the beams that the previous owner had installed. Um, I think there's been some confusion in the comments. No, these aren't the original beams. These were added just a few years ago and not the nicest quality wood. So I wanted to be able to, especially on the first floor um, where we have the fireplace and um, the rooms are going to be a little bit more rustic in our design. I just wanted to have them be uh, a little bit more rustic and close closer to what they would have been if they were the original beams. So I don't often see a ton of wildlife in person aside from the occasional deer running through the forest or, or the odd uh, herd of goats walking through our property. There are so many goats. But I do see lots of signs of wildlife. 
This is a, a chicken egg that I'm not sure a fox or um, a European polecat, if they eat eggs, I don't even know, uh, went and stole from some hen house nearby and then carried it up to uh, what is arguably a very good view for the valley and then just had himself a snack, which I find to be um, uh, quite funny. <laughs> Hey. Hey, we were just in a car accident. Are you okay? Um, yeah, we're fine. I just can't get it. Okay, just, just, no, it's. Okay, um, try to just calm down and find your location and send that to me. So it's been three or four days since I've um, picked up the camera. Uh, yes, Heather, Alexa, and Chloe were all in a car accident on their way to school. Thankfully, no injuries at all. A little sore, um, but nothing um, concerning at all. Um, of course, that's a, uh, a shocking and terrifying thing to happen, but they all handled it like champs, especially Heather. I could not be more proud. That's a, uh, a stressful thing uh, to go through in a, in a foreign country. That's not something that we had um, prepared ourselves of. We need to learn how to navigate that situation. Like, what's the protocol? What do you do? And now you're um, stuck in a situation where papers are being pushed around and you're asked to be signing things that you don't understand. And it's, it's confusing. And um, yet she calmly handled the situation. And um, it took me about an hour or so to get to her um, with our friend who was helping translate and uh, navigate the situation, but I uh, could not be more proud of how she handled that. What happened is someone rear-ended her on the way to school. Presumably he wasn't paying attention as traffic slowed, um, hit her car. Um, in the process, he totaled his car, um, and then that pushed her into... Uh, the next person in line and kind of sandwiched her between the two cars. Um, but again, no injuries. Everyone's fine. They should be fixing our car in the next two to three weeks. I'm not entirely sure how that's going to go. She had hoped to be here and kind of explain that everything's fine. Um, but between that and the emotional stress there and uh, just a, a lot of other things going on in her personal life and news that she's had recently, um, she thought it best to kind of take a personal week and not be on camera this week, which I um, completely understand and respect. And I, and I hope you understand that as, as well. Um, but today I have... Um, a lot of explaining to do because we have uh, taken all of our plans in the last two weeks and had to completely reshape everything and more or less kind of start from scratch and change up our plans pretty drastically. So allow me to share with you our new plan moving forward with the house. So if you're going to be crazy enough to take on one of these old historic homes and attempt to renovate it, you have to understand that you're going to face frequently news that just punches you in the face and <laughs> makes you rethink everything and change your plans completely. And that's exactly what happened after we had this terrace dug out. See, as a reminder, our plan was to dig behind the house to solve the moisture problem that was going on back there. That's the only proper way to fix that. And after we've dug out, since you've created a large space, you might as well go ahead and build rooms and connect the house um, as it currently is not fully connected. That creates a massive dirt problem. You have uh, an estimated 550 cubic meters of dirt and you need some place to put that, which is when we decided to um, commission and look into building a new terrace wall to hold all of that dirt. And we've spent the last six months discussing, measuring, planning, uh, doing soil tests, even bringing a geologist out, which is insanity to me. <laughs> it's gone um, quite many steps above what I thought it would take to get here. Um, and then we finally came to um, the point of flattening out the terrace and getting ready to dig the foundation. And after the engineer inspected the terrace and saw the soil after we dug a little while, um, he, he changed course and no longer felt comfortable building the wall close enough to the edge as close as we needed it. He didn't feel like the soil was safe enough um, to do that. 
um, which caused the wall to move back away from the edge um, quite a distance and increase the foundation by quite a lot, um, which kind of rendered the wall idea uh, pointless. It didn't solve the the problem anymore of storing the dirt. It was it was not no longer a viable option for us. So because the wall moved in a lot and no longer held the dirt, and because the foundation became uh, nearly twice as expensive as budgeted, uh, it means that we cannot build this wall, which means that we don't really have an option to put the dirt anywhere. The other terraces can't really hold it. There is a terrace at the very bottom of the property that's large enough to hold it all, um, possibly even without building a retaining wall. Um, but the the paperwork required for that um, is um, not feasible within the next two years, as I've been told. Um, so the only other option is to dig behind the house and drive that dirt away and remove it. Um, but for some strange reason in Italy, the cost to dig behind the house, which in my opinion is a immensely complicated task, like incredibly difficult. The cost to dig is actually quite affordable in my opinion, but the cost to drive the dirt away from the property is four to five times the cost of the dirt, um, <laughs> which makes no sense. Um, I've tried to understand that. I, it's just not feasible. You might as well buy a new house. We looked into, could we dig behind the house, seal up the house, stage the dirt around um, the, the close vicinity of where we were digging, and then seal up the house and put it back without building the rooms. And that way, at least you can block the water. And unfortunately, there's not enough space to safely store the dirt. Um, what that means is it kind of snowballed from one thing to the next. And in the end, we had to make the very difficult decision to abandon the entire process of digging behind the house as it is no longer feasible. We tried and tried and tried to find solutions, but I think the final straw for me was when I heard that their plan was to actually dig from this side of the house versus the back side. Um, they didn't think that they could fit the machinery um, back there, that the terrace would hold the weight of the machinery to get over there. Um, so the only way to dig was to destroy this beautiful seven, 800 year old stone staircase, as well as the one beneath me. And when I heard that, I was like, no, this can't happen. Like, I, like the, whole, the whole point of us doing this is to preserve the history and to appreciate what was built here. And I, I can't, like, if you have to destroy those steps, like, I can't do this. And it was funny because they're like, why? <laughs> like, they're like, it's just stones, which I think is, is um, it's just amusing because when you grow up here and you see these homes everywhere, um, uh, their perspective is a little bit of, it's just stones. Like there's not, um, it's nothing special. I'm sure that if they would come to another country and see a different type of architecture that's unique, they would consider that more special. But for me, seeing this unique style of dry stacking these stones and creating stair steps, creating uh, stairs from one terrace to the next that you actually find all over this property, but in particular, this one in front of the house, um, that's what I fell in love with, this view, which is not very good right now because of the sun and all of that, but this view looking this direction, seeing those stairs, and I, I just was not willing to lose that. A big thank you to today's video sponsor, Mundly, who is one of the top language learning apps out there. And if you're interested in learning a language, now is a great time to sign up because they are currently offering lifetime access for 96% off. Mundly is a language learning app that gives you access to learning 41 different foreign languages. Lessons and audio materials are recorded with native speakers to ensure authenticity and correct accent formation. Through the help of Mundly's chatbot with speech recognition, you can engage in real life conversation and Mundly will give you real time feedback to help with your pronunciation. And there's even a hands-free feature which will allow you to learn a new language while carrying on other activities like shopping, working out, or cooking. And Mundly focuses on practical lessons that you can use in your everyday life. The app has over 110 million users worldwide and is currently offering a New Year's sale, giving you 96% off a lifetime access to all languages. If you're interested in signing up, you can take advantage of this limited time discount by scanning this QR code or by visiting our direct link, mundly.app slash raising voyagers. And thank you so much to Mundly for sponsoring today's video. So what ultimately does this mean? Well, there's a little bit of a, a bummer and adjustment to not having the extra rooms be, uh, behind the house. But the good news is that the, 
the house will remain as it is. I would rather protect the look of the house from the outside and keep the historical value than have the extra space. We don't really need the extra space. Of course, that's nice. But then we have to solve the moisture problem and we're simply reverting back to the original plan of trying to drain out the water from the inside, perhaps with a French drain or something similar, and then building off an internal wall to block any moisture from coming into the room um, or some version of that. We're still kind of consulting with people and deciding the best version, if it's best to block it off or if it's best to let it dry out into the room and different people have different opinions on that and we're trying to make that plan, but it's back to the original plan. The good news is that this means that we will finish the house so dramatically faster, which is encouraging. We have slowed things down quite a bit as we prepare to pursue this old plan. But now that we're no longer doing that plan, it can move very quickly and that means that we can live in the house much faster. All right, so now that these beams are finished up in terms of the hand hewing process and staining them, I need to at least seal coat them because after all of that labor intensive work, if um, the stain fades or anything happens, I'm not gonna be very happy. <laughs> uh, so I'm using a colorless stain that, um, I wouldn't call it a semi-gloss, I would call it, um, Probably more of a satin finish, um, which I think does a nice thing to the color. It kind of enriches the color, uh, makes it pop a little bit more, locks it in, and uh, is going to, most importantly, protect the wood.
So I've gone and taken a half can of used dark walnut or noche oscuro, and I've added, I think it was about 30 milliliters of pure black stain just to take it one uh, shade darker, one shade richer. And while it was a small difference, I, re I really like it. It looks quite nice. It's really popping. Um, obviously it goes on with quite the, the glossy sheen initially as you see, but then when you wipe it off, it is very, very nice. Now, if I wanted to be super picky, I would try to figure out a way to take a little bit of the reddish hue out, add a little bit more brown, go a little bit darker, but the reality is, is that I can get so fixated on one small little detail that uh, the project never gets finished. I was taught a long time ago that a project like this is uh, never quite finished, only abandoned. And um, I'm, I'm calling this good, very pleased. I've lost track, but I think I have four or five more to hand to you.